Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to another LeMag. Let's make a game. Now, <clears throat> before I get started and all, like, into the code, um, we only have a short bit left. Like, this is, this is the last part that we have. It's the using the data store. So before I get started, I wanted to show this to you from yesterday. This is from Roblox. Um, as powered and promised last April, uh, April 1st, the Roblox unlocks today. Okay, so early access 2099999999. So for now, it's less of a supercomputer, more of a cool hat for your avatar. This right here, all right, this is this is very cool. It's called the Robox or something. And um, I went and got it. Uh, oh, I already had it open. I already got it, all right? But it's just the hat. So like when you try it on, hold on, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna load correctly. Yeah, it's just, just a hat, right? So um, I'm actually going to put it on my avatar and we're gonna go into studio and I'm gonna turn this into a model that you can download and all kinds of good stuff. So click on it, put it on, jump over here and I'm just gonna jump straight into the game, just like this. <clears throat> so I've already got my studio open and as I play, boom, I've got the Robox head, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over here to workspace, I'm gonna find my avatar, and I'm gonna hit Control C and I'm gonna copy my entire avatar as he stands. I'm gonna hit stop, and then inside the workspace, I'm going to paste it back in. Paste, there we go. And then I'm just gonna go find that object, which should be, let's see, mesh part accessory, is that it? I got the vanity shades, X hold. Uh, I think that's the cat, there's the wings. Those are my glasses. So is that it right there? Can I take this off and put it into the world? Yeah, there we go. So here's the actual uh, accessory, okay? And it looks really cool. I mean, it looks like uh, an old PlayStation or something, but it's supposed to be like some kind of console um, thing. Anyhow, I'm going to take and pull this out. Boom, like that. We're gonna rename this just to uh, the row box, like that. Then I can just go and delete my, my avatar. So he's gone. Now this does have attachment points and stuff like that. Um, why is this non... Oh, it's because it's a special mesh. Do I need to add this to a part, I think? What kind of, what kind is this? Property. It's a part, it's just a row box. Okay. Why is there like no bounding box? Maybe, maybe I'm confused. Let's go over here to move. <clears throat> Any oh. ideas? No, I have no clue. I don't know why. Um, what about rotation? Can we rotate it back to its original orientation is zero. <laughs> so the mesh itself is actually turned. Um, let's just go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to drop this down to brink. Oh, that's too far. Can we just go to select and then gr grab? Oh, 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 I'm moving the canvas. I can't grab it. Why can't I grab? Oh, it's because it's a mesh part. Doy. Um, let's do this. Let's add uh, just a regular part to the world. And we're going to put the Robux thing inside the part. Do, 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 do. That way when I move this, it actually moves that. And then I, I can actually call this the bounding box. Let's see. Uh, Robux bounding box, just like that. And then uh, we'll, we'll grab a hold of this thing. Kind of move it in here. Like that. And then I should be able to set this orientation or position. Position to zero, comma zero, comma zero. That way it's right in the center. And then this one's orientation can be zero, comma zero, comma zero. There we go. Now if we pull up this bounding box. Oh, 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 wait, that was the wrong one. Pull up the bounding box, there we go. I'm going to um, just try and make this the same size as the rest of it. Um, let's go to scale. And I'm going to turn off under modules, turn off the move. Oh gosh, not that. Dear goodness. Why is the whole thing going? I don't want the whole thing. I just want. What in the world? Hmm. 
That's the mesh, right? If I if I delete that, the box goes away. Control Z. Original sides. Um, hat attachment avatar type. Oh, there we go. There we go. And then orientation zero, come zero, come zero. Oh, snap. That's what I was talking about. Okay, so I don't actually need that. It was because it was, uh... Oh, wait, no. Do I need it? I do need it. No, I don't need it. I don't think I need it. Can I move it? Whoa. Okay, there's its original part on the inside. Kind of, kind of the mesh makes it transparent. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, let's go to rotate. We're just going to rotate this down like that. Um, I'm going to use a move. We're going to kind of make it like that. And that's that's not bounding. Right there would be bounding. Um, like that. There we go. So it's kind of a little console thing. Uh, now I think, is it anchored? It might not be anchored. Let's go to anchor, can collide. Where's the, the bound box? Isn't there a, oh, there's a custom physics property. The size. Mm, what if we make this one by one by one? Oh, it kind of worked. Size is a block. Yep, I like, I like a block. Block is good. Uh, I guess I can make that a little bit bigger. Let's go two by two by two. There. Now it looks better. Now, can I grab that and move it around? I still can't grab it for some reason. That's crazy. Anyhow. Um, it's got the mesh part inside of it. It's called the Robox. Uh, and I'm actually going to call this the Robox dash model. Um, actually... Um, let's do insert. I'm actually going to insert a model. Model. There we go. And we're going to call this the Robox model. Just like that. And then we're going to place that inside. Boom. So, um, then I'm going to export this. Export to export, export, export. Export selection. Um, no. That's not what I wanted. I want to export to Roblox. Ah, here we go. Save to Roblox. Uh, publish as plugin. No, that's not it. Can I just do save to Roblox? There we go. Xbox. Uh, X or, pff, Xbox. No, it's more like a PlayStation. Um, this is the April Fool's hat object that was made by and provided by Roblox. In quotations, I make no claim to this being mine. It is not. And then I'll put in the um, Video. No, I'm, I'm not going to put anything about my video. Nothing. Nothing. I don't want any credit for this. This is all Roblox making. They made the mesh. They made all the stuff. So. This is just me putting it back out there so you can use it as an object inside your game if you want. Uh, allow copying, yes. Um, creator is not me, but I can't, I can't change. I guess the, okay, I'm gonna leave it as me as the creator, but that's only because of creative comments. Like I, I created the object that I'm putting out there, not the original. It's like a, it's like a spin-off. Um, they made a hat, I made an object or something like that. Genre can be under all. Allow comments, absolutely. If you wanted to go comment on the object, you can. I'm gonna hit that. There we go. Uploading, uploading, uploading. So I think this falls under, oh dear, no, the coffee's gone. Uploading, 94%. Close, there we go, successfully submitted. Uh, you may find your accessory here. So this link should be down in the description down below, possibly. There we go. Uh, uploaded April 2nd. And let's go into configure. Uh, open for comments, allow copying by switching, allow copying, you're granting every other Roblox user of Roblox the right in various ways, uh, the content. So I'm going to absolutely hit save. Now I think if I wanted to, I could like turn that off and then 
isn't there a way to sell this or something like that? But that would just be cheating. Don't do that. No way. Uh, there we go. So, Robox model. I think they called it the Robox, right? I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's called the Robox. So. Hmm. Kind of cool. Anyhow. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me on that one. Uh, there's my Twitter feed. No Twitter feeds. Let's go back into Lamag. Close. Um, feel free to go and grab your copy of the box itself. Um, let's go ahead and move it out of the way for the moment. And it will be in World if you wanted to come and see it. Just over here on the, the right hand side. Actually, could I put it as... Yeah, because it is a model. Dude, wait a second. <laughs> Stop. Uh, just for fun, let's go put this down in here. I'm going to name this to Table 2, and we're going to name this Table. F2 Table. There we go. Just for fun. Boop, 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 boop. That's gonna that's gonna be so weird. Okay. Oh no. C frame module angle rotation in the primary part. I didn't mark anything as a primary part. So let's do mark primary part that right there. There we go. <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh, can I? I, I can't place it. I can't place it. No. <laughs> no. Oh, is there, is, there's no errors going off. What's, what seems to be the problem? I wonder if it's clipping somewhere. There's got to be an error of some kind. Yeah. Poop, whatever. Um, let's see, what does this have that the other one doesn't? Bounding box. Uh, let's copy bounding box. Paste into bounding box. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of that weld constraint. Um, will that work, I wonder? No. Oh well. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm totally getting distracted by uh, having fun here. So let's turn this off. I'm going to turn this back into the Robox dash model. And then we will turn this back into table just regular. Make sure that our system is fixed. There we go. Yep, I can place things once again. Yay. And then we can hit R to rotate them. Press E to drop them. Uh, if it's red, you cannot place. It's like a really transparent tabletop, isn't it? I feel like I should turn that down some. Hold on, where's the table top? There we go. 75, let's go 0 0.25. 0 0.25 on its transparency. So it's not it's not so clear that you can't see it anymore. There we go, that looks good. That way you can actually tell that it's a table. I didn't think I was gonna have to turn down the transparency of glass, but apparently you have to. Okay. Okay, code, stop doing this, let's go play with the, there we go. Using data stores to save placements. Uh, we are already 13 minutes in. We're already halfway through the video. You may find that depending on your game, uh, on your game, you might, you may find that depending on your game, there should have been some commas in there. Uh, you might want the player to be able to leave and come back to their canvas part with all the stuff that they have placed on it. To do this, we are going to take advantage of data stores. To start off, <clears throat> we need another remote function since the data stores only work on the server. Um, we shouldn't need to pass any data to the server aside from if we should save, clear, load the data. Um, this is because we already have a twin on the server that has the exact same information. Okay. What? Okay, so this is a server-side script. Local database. Remote placement. Serialize. If success. Return saving results. Warning results. Remotes.ds placement. Okay, 
So, um, okay, get data stores, get data stores. Remotes? Done, DS. Well, how do we know what remotes is? Is that already in our server script? Hold on. Mm, remote. Right there. This is class module script. Oh, goodness me. I am so sorry. I have lost my, my place. Give me a sec. Okay, I think I, I think I found it. Okay, so inside the server side, uh, server script service, I think that's where we are supposed to put this little beauty right here. So, I got Fortnite running in the background. I didn't even realize it was up. We're not playing Fortnite right now. There's one app. Okay. So, let's go over here. Local data store. Wait, um, you guys showed me view source. There we go. Control A, copy, switch over to here. No, not that, this. And <clears throat> let's play this in here. Remotes.ds placement on server invoke. So over here, we are going to need a remote function. Remote function. Uh, invoke placement remote function. The remote function is going to be called DS placement because we don't have one of those yet. On server invoke, it's going to invoke the player saving user data. Uh, local key is going to be set to player dot dot. So this is in conjunction with the user ID. So player underscore user ID. Uh, local success comma result equals p call so that's a that's a remote call so whenever the the function if it fails it'll say successful or not successful and give you the result of its call or the return of its call if saving and placement object placement objects dot player then if use data okay so if saving right here if it's there uh, if something is passed to it and then if user data use data so when we make the call if there's something there data store set async key placement object colon serialize oh hold up is this yeah so this actually gets the um the module script of the placement objects so all the objects that have been placed by the server side script it goes and grabs them um, from that player. Wow. That's really cool. So each one... In, okay, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did. Um, wow, that's really smart. Because serializing basically turns it into what's called JSON. Um, it's just a, a long string of like what the objects are inside of a string. If not saving, then return data dot get sync. If successful, then return saving or result. Um, and then warn. Okay. So that's the first part of that. Next, uh, as alluded to in the code above, we are going to define a new method called serialize. This method will convert all the objects we have currently placed into a format that can be stored in the data store. Since I just want to give a simple example, we'll do this by creating a dictionary where the object space C frame is the key and the furniture placements are the item. Oh, I guess it's not already a function. Item's name and its value. Okay, okay, there we go. So, function, placement, serialize. Local serial becomes a new table. Local CFI equals self dot canvas part C frame inverse. Oh my goodness, the sub switch. There we go. Um, canvas part dot C frame inverse. Don't know what inverse is. Maybe that's something that can be done with an, uh, a C frame. Maybe. C frame uh, inverse. Roblox Studio C frame inverse. Nice. Um, dev forums. Is that it? Okay. 
Oh, wait. <laughs> no, you don't need to see the Twitter stuff. And we don't need to see my Roblox avatar anymore. Inverse. Children equals self dot canvas objects get children. So it'll get all the children inside of it. Key equals object space C frame string. Value equals the object's name. Um, for i equals one to number of children, do local object space C frame. So what if you don't have any children? Does it, it goes from one to zero? I guess the loop just doesn't go, it doesn't perform anything. So, and then we get a return of the serial. So this right here is a new function which has to be defined before the function is called. I think it has to be defined before it's called. So there's the function called placement serialize. Actually, we need to put that into the placement script. So over here in our module is colliding place, return placement. We'll just put it down here at the bottom. So this is inside the, the actual module system because you want the placement of the object to be able to be serialized. So it will return the object's uh, key and value. So the C frame of the object and the name of the object. So that's good. So we don't need it over here. Did I, did I leave it over here? No, I took it out. Cool. We can get rid of that and back over to here. Um, now, whenever we are ready to save, we can store the return of the serialize method to the server and retrieve it for later. The next question we have, uh, we have to answer is how to use that information to put everything back where it was. To do this, we're going to create another constructor. It will it will take not only the canvas part as an argument, but also retrieved serialized data. Placement dot from serialization canvas part data. So that's right there. Nope, uh, control A, copy. Go back over here. That's gonna be inside the placement, right? I think this has to be inside here. So it'll actually be a property of the canvas object and the data that's sent to it, local equals self. <clears throat> data equals data or blah, blah, blah for CF name in pairs data to find local model. Uh, local model equals furniture, which furniture is defined, right? Furniture is not defined. Furniture, find the furniture model with the same name. Furniture is not defined. So where are you getting furniture from? Oh, control Z, control Z. That's not where it goes. Server side script, find furniture. It's not in there. Find furniture. There it is in there somewhere. Control find. There's four matches of it. Let's go back. Yeah. Furniture. Okay. So, um, where, where are they placing that at? <clears throat> Placement dot from serialize. It's just a function. Sure enough, if we save and load our data, we get the following results. Okay. So, um, hmm, can I just go down here and paste it in? Placement dot from serialization. Sure enough, if we make sure we save our data, we get the following results. Mm, okay, placement dot from serialization. Self equals placement dot new canvas. I somehow feel like this, this isn't going to load or save if we do this. Dinosaurs from remote functions. Remote stop DS placement. 
Um, this is the server side script, right? So we could do on player join, but then how do we invoke my placement? Hmm. I guess we'd have to create a button of some kind to invoke the save. It's exact same information. Okay. Next is to allude to the helmet serial C frame object. Um hang tight. Okay, I think I figured it out. Because this right here, the server side script, this actually contains the save, the clear, and the load. So come back over here to the server side script itself do we have player added on here as a trigger remote yes placement on server invoke we do not we need the player saving and use data so let's do this um, game dot players dot um no on no added added player added connect first join first join load there we go does that need to be in quotes i don't know if that needs to be in quotes or not unknown global first load join okay function first um copy this and it's going to be the exact same function and then player like that and then we are actually going to call this function up here on server invoke so um, on server invoke which we are on the server don't we just saving user data if we don't have user data then we just sync with the key I'm gonna give it a try <clears throat> okay so let's just call dot invoke no does it know what remotes are Hold on. We've got remotes up here somewhere. Remote invoke. Yeah, remotes equals game service. Wait for child remotes. And that's in there. So why is it not working? Okay, let's do this. Game dot. Uh, what's that under? Replicated storage dot remotes dot ds placement colon. Oh, there we go. And we should have invoke, right? Invoke client. Fire server. Invoke client. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, you smarty pants. Okay. Can't do that. Let's do this. We don't care if you join or what, what happens. Let's go down here to um, the start player. Um, starting GUI. And we're just gonna add a screen GUI. And we're just gonna call this the, um, what is it, save screen? Save screen. And then back over here in the mag, um, we are going to add a button. Just add a text button. And we should be able to grab this. Here. And we're just going to say load. Uh, button text is going to be load. And um, let's add a script here. This is going to be a local script. So save load script. And I'm going to attach this. So um, we're going to call function load. Uh, that's all I need, right? Because I am the player. I'm, I'm going to be the one invoking. 
local player game dot players dot local player me equals I guess I should localize that I'm really bad about making local variables and stuff like that uh, but we are going to have what is this called this is the load button so btn load I use conventions like btn for button uh, tbl for table stuff like that I don't know if I've told you this you guys that but that's what I do for conventions if it's a frame I do frm or a form frm stuff like that local me equals uh, game dot players dot local player and we're going to do let's see remotes I guess I can do local in here local remotes equals game colon get service remote no replicated storage dot colon wait for child and then what was it called it was called remotes right remotes there we go just like that so on load we need to connect that remotes no not regions remotes dot ds placement colon Oh wait, we just do fire server, right? Hold on. Game dot replicated storage dot remotes dot ds colon fire or invoke invoke is it invoke? Oh wait, did I do? Haha, <laughs> I. Copy that all out and go back into here. Add local script, you silly goose. And we can delete that one. So F2 is going to be save load script. Print hello world. No, thank you. We're good. And then I can do colon invoke server. Okay, that's how to do it. So, um, and, oh, isn't there a trick to this? Like, I can't pass, um, hold on, hold on. Invoking the server, what is the problem with invoking the server? You cannot do a function, you have to do anonymously. Okay, so, let's do this. Um, anon system, no, anon function call. So, hold on, we'll do this. Um, oh, I guess I didn't need to do that. I could, yeah. Invoke server. And then the function itself. Invoke server. What do I need to pass? Hold on. Uh, hang tight. Okay, okay, wait. I already have a local script on my placement, so I don't need this over here. Let's get rid of that, delete this, and we'll go into my placement down here and just make a function and tie it. And we don't need an anonymous function, we just need to pass in the information. So on load, it's going to be player. Or me, because me is game.players.localplayer. We don't need to call that. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We're, we're going to need to call that because remotes is the game service. And I think I already got remotes up here at the top, don't I? I do not. That would be something nice to place up there at the top. Maybe. Okay. Storage remote to invoke server me. Okay, so the placement system itself for loading. No, that's the module. This is the server side script. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See, on in, uh, on server invoke, this is technically an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. I can't call the function itself. It just it waits for the firing of that that remote invoke, that remote function, not the remote event. Uh, player saving user data. Okay, so um, on my placement, when we load me, are we saving? No, we're not, so I'm gonna pass in a zero. Data um, is going to be canvas, whatever our current canvas is. Canvas, right? Is that right? I don't know if that's right. <clears throat> but I am going to have to tie to the um, thing. Okay, so um, what does this fall under? If I hit F5, do I get any errors at the moment? There shouldn't be any errors. Yeah, there is an error. Uh-oh. What line am I on? Oh, pss, duh. Boom. Comment those out. Um, let's hit stop and play. Now, if I go and look, I should have a user interface on my player. Player GUI, right there. So, it's going to be under screen save. I'm just going to open up a notepad real quick. It's going to be under screen. So, that right there, that's going to be useful for all of my, my buttons stop and where did I have this at my placement okay um, I'm just gonna say GUI local GUI equals case um, oh what's this what's this what's this game dot players dot local player dot and then we're going to do wait for a child, player GUI, and then another wait for child, wait for child, save screen. So that right there, um, the game.players.localplayer, all right, that should load whenever this fire fires because I have to have the script on my person in order to to res. So the player's already added. Uh, as for the GUI, the GUI not, might not be rendered in yet. That's why we want to wait for the child. And then once it loads in, we can then call the function to wait for child for the screen save itself. This is kind of how the norm is, just because when it fires up and the server fires and you're joining the game, there's like this weird span of like, how fast is your connection? Was there a lag spike? Is there something going on? And if you try and call something or get something before it's in the server, you get a, an error. So this is this is good. So um, I can just look at GUI.BTN load colon uh, dot what is on mouse down. Um, on game dot starter GUI dot be, uh, save screen dot btn load colon no dot on no mouse mouse button one click so that's what I actually want right there copy that paste over here whenever you use uh, variables like this it doesn't pull the correct autocomplete um, connect Oh wait, I gotta have capital C now. Connect, load. Hmm. GUI dot btn uh, save dot same thing. And I'm gonna make another function. We're gonna call it function save. Um, okay. There we go. 
And then this should be basically the same stuff. Only with save, we're going to put a one right there. I hope that works. <laughs> Uh, and then we should also make a function and call it clear. Wow, I cannot spell clear like that. Now, how does it know if it's going to clear? Server side script. Um, right here on invoke player saving. Uh, save the data. Else clear the data. Okay, so if we use data, if it exists, then it will save it under the serialization. If there's nothing passed, it will clear it out. Whoops. So let's go over here. And basically this is going to be the exact same thing. Local me remotes, invoke server me. And we have to have saving, right? If saving and placement object players. Okay, so clear, but we're not gonna pass anything in on that second or that last argument. And we should probably create the buttons before we forget. Uh, BTN save and BTN clear. And we're gonna call the function clear. So let's head back over to here on this GUI right here. And we're going to, um, let's see, duplicate, duplicate. And this one right here, I should be able to just move down like that. And, oh, that's the wrong one. I'll move that down a little bit more. Here we go. We'll take this one, move it down here, move that one up a little bit. We're going to rename this one to BTN save. And BTN clear. Just like that. Now we need the text to change. Name. Text. This is clear, and this one right here is going to be safe. Fingers crossed. I probably messed something up. Hmm. No errors. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's just add three right there. I'm going to click on that save button. Cannot write to data store if the API access is not enabled. Oh, stop. Okay, so file, uh, oh wait, actually we need to go over to the Roblox stuff, go to development. Um, we are going to configure game. Um, enable studio API services, click on save. Now we should be able to do it. Wait, what does that say? Yeah, it's still public, so here we go. Oh, that's weird song again, skip. Okay, one, two, three, save. Okay, so we just saved it. I'm gonna hit stop. Ooh, here we go. Hit F5. Will this work? I don't know if it'll work. Come on, move. Load, data server. Request was added to the queue. If the queue fills, further requests will be dropped. Trying to send request.key player. Okay, data store request was added to the queue. If the request queue fills, further requests will be dropped. Try sending further, uh, fewer request.key equals, and then that's my player ID. Hmm. What did I do wrong? What if I do clear? One, two, three, four. I'm gonna hit save. Save, 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 save. <laughs> okay, so I think it, it may have saved. Hold on, do I have a database script editor? All right, player underscore. I should probably copy that because I'm not going to have that key. Copy. Notepad. No, not not. Notepad. There we go. Paste. <laughs> hmm. Let's hit stop. And let's see. Data store error. 
What did we save uh, the name of it as? Okay, data store. Data store service placement system. So it's called placement system. Data store name is placement system. Um, connect. And then the key itself was over there on the notepad. Copy. Paste. Q. Huh. It's saving. It saved it right there. <sighs> so why isn't it loading? Why can't I invoke the load? So, um, just real quick, this uh, shows that the, the data store is there. If I hit F5, and I hit the load, this is supposed to pull up a load of some kind. So let's see if uh, the data store is still there after I pulled in the load. It's not, so it's saving over the top of it for some reason. Um, let's go to, okay, I can get out of the data store. This right here, button, load, good. The name of this is called BTN load. Go over to my placement system, BTN load. And the function is load. When we do this, me dot players dot local player. So I pass in myself, and then I pass in the canvas. Is the canvas the placement system? Hold on. Placement. Wait, what is this? Is this the thing that I didn't do? <laughs> See, this is referring to self. So this tells me that this is supposed to be over here inside the placement system. Maybe I'm confused as to where these are. Hang tight. Okay, I think I figured it out. <clears throat> so, this over here, this is the actual constructor. Just like placement.new was a constructor and it took a canvas part, this is placement.fromserialization takes a canvas part, then the data. So, I moved it from inside the local script over to the module script of placement, which should have been in here under the, the replicated storage. That's where our, our module script is. I think this is how to do it. Uh, local placement equals placement dot new canvas canvas. I'm going to do the same thing, kind of, where I do uh, placement down here. This is going to be returning some data. So I'm going to say my data equals remote function invoke server me. And then I'm going to do um, Placement equals placement from serial new my data. Just like that. I think that's how I'm supposed to do it. Mm. Wish me luck. We only got 10 minutes before it's an entire hour of, of, oh my goodness. One, two, three, save. Okay, so we saved it. I hit and stop. Where'd all my buttons go? I don't know. That's crazy. Where did where did all, all my buttons go? Okay, fine. F5, and we're going to run it again. Am I recording? I am recording. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, broke it. Broke something. All right. Give me a second to figure this one out. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm kind of perplexed. I'm looking at the pairs of data that got passed into the placement object, but it seems to have passed in my player, not the data itself. Data is code primate. So why? Oh, invoke server, invoke server from serialization, canvas, my data. 
my data equals invoke server me. Ha 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 ha. Okay. What does uh, what does the DS placement do? It calls the server side script, and then on remotes dot invoke placement. Hold on. My data equals remotes DS placement invoke. So what is DS placement? DS placement is remotes dot DS placement. Invoke server me one canvas. Okay. So what's the problem? DS placement on server invoke player saving use data. So what what happens is this returns the data. Does it return two things? Hold on. Um, arg, let's see, arg one, my data, print arg one, print my data, comma. Does this return two things? I wonder if that returns two things. I have no clue. I'm just gonna hit play, and I'm gonna load. Uh, it returns a table and nil. I wonder what I can see by inside of this table. Go to source code. No. So arg1 is the data, the second one is nothingness. What about a third? Comma, arg3, print. Arc three, and then we can just do a load. Load, nil, nil. All right, so it's still nil. Um, well, let's go back into the my placement system. What if, and this is a big what if, we just don't pass in anything, and we do. Serialization. Invoke server. We just have to call it. Now it's not going to know what data is there. This has got to be something. Test. Right, now let's call it proper. My data equals remote for i comma. Let's see index o object index value there we go in i pairs my data do print i comma v so this should print out everything that's inside that table that comes off whenever we, we press load maybe hello So what if we save some stuff here? Save, load, nothing, load, nothing. Okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> God. Um, in my data, invoke server, me. Table was expected, got object. What if I do get children? Children. Stop and play. <laughs> there we go. Player scripts, GUI, backpack. What? 
Why is it just returning me and not the canvas? Okay. So this is my placement system. We are invoking the server. Load. My data equals remote invoke server me. And we're not passing anything to it. So when we don't pass anything to it, it should return like this. Okay, so here's here's where we save the data. When we save the data, we pass in the key of the player, right? We pass in the placement objects as serialization. That would be the canvas. Um, to clear the data, we just pass in the key and we don't give it user data, which is nothingness. So that's actually what it's doing right there. It's okay. And not saving. If saving and placement objects, if use data is there, then we save the, uh, the stuff. But if we're saving and we're not using data, it just cancels the sync. If we pass in the player's ID, but we don't pass in anything else, it is supposed to return data store get async key. But instead, I'm getting back the player. Hmm. If success, then return saving or result. Print saving print result. I wonder if, uh, okay, let's do code. Code primate and nil. Save that, and now let's load. Wait, what? Data request is full. Code primate nil player scripts. Why did it take so long to add that out? Okay, well, at least the save portion is working correctly, but I mean, that's not gonna help you if you can't load. Yeah, we're two minutes away from oblivion. An entire hour of coding with your favorite um, non-technical programmer who's trying to figure out Lua. Give this to me in SQL, please. I would be able to like just select data and get data all day long, insert data tables. I think that's the only reason I can actually program inside Lua is because I know all the other languages and I can kind of decipher what this thing is doing. So, um, the function load me equals player dot local player and then my data equals remotes invoke server me. It passes in only my name. And inside here, when we do that, here is uh, on invoke, we get players nil nil. Nothing is passed in. So the first thing it does, it takes the key and it goes player underscore my user ID and it says local success equals result of p call. Okay, and then this is a anon anonymous function down here that says if, so, oh, hold on a second. Okay, so um, yeah, we are going to go over. Right here, I'm adding in a couple of little things down here in uh, the server side script. Sorry, that was my wife that called, so she needed help with a spider. <laughs> Um, down here we have success equals blah blah blah. Okay, and then here's where we actually are like passing in stuff in player saving use, right? And down here I put in saving and then the key, clearing and the key, and loading and the key. This way I could keep an eye on like what was going on. <clears throat> and when I hit play, I went to save. One, two, three. I click on save. It says saving down here. I don't know if you can. Can you see that? Yeah. Saving. So it was it was saving correctly. I don't need the watch or the call stack at the moment. Thank you. Um, 
if I click on load, it says clearing. So something's not getting passed. If I click on clear, it says saving. Something's not getting passed. Something's off. So I went back over here to my placement system just to make sure. Um, button clear, I'm running clear. Button save, I'm running save. Button load, I'm running load. I go look at my canvas itself. Uh, load button, and its text is load. Save button, its text button is save. Clear is clear. So all of these are set up correctly, and each one of them makes this function call up here to the top. So uh, on this one, I'm going to say print um, local script clear pressed. And then I'm going to say local script save was pressed. I use print to kind of troubleshoot things. Local script load was pressed. So now whenever I click on the buttons themselves, they should um, correspond to whatever I'm clicking. So load, um, <clears throat> went by a little fast. Local script, local uh, load was pressed, clearing player. So let's go look and see what I passed in. Um, local, let's see, local load was passed in. Um, oh, I tried passing just nil to it as well. That did not work. So take this out. Um, when we clear it, we don't want to pass in a canvas at all. So try that. Load, I should just pass in the player and it should return me whatever is saved under my name. Oops. One, two, three. Save it. So we save the script and if we go look at the plugins, go over here. Uh, connect. Oh gosh, I gotta connect to the data store itself. What was it called again? Um, data store. Placement system. Copy. Go back over here to home, environment, plugins, data store name, paste, connect. Wait, what? Data store cannot be accessed from the client side. Well, duh. <laughs> All right, let's hit stop. Uh, let's hit query. So it shows my three tables right there. Now, if I hit play again, Okay, so something to keep in mind is when you launch Studio, you have a server that kind of runs in the background and then you're looking at the client. In order to see what the server sees, you actually have to come over here and switch views to the server client. This is what the, the server can see. I could have ran the plugin from over here, but I didn't because I was, wasn't thinking at the time. Anyhow, we have data in there. I click load and it says clearing player. <laughs> oh no, why did it clear? And when I hit clear, doesn't it say load? No, it says saving. So whatever I'm doing up here is actually passing in. So let's go, let's go over here. Where am I at? Placement. Okay. So I pressed, where was it? Um, local script, load was pressed, clearing player. And this is right here. So it didn't have use data. If use data is nil, my placement system, load. It just passed in me. Isn't player, player's always argument one, saving two, oh, 
code. You're an idiot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you call and invoke, you don't have to mm, pass in the player. The player's known. Okay, so when we're saving, we want to pass in saving and the canvas. When we're clearing, we want to pass in saving but no canvas. And when we are loading, we aren't going to pass in anything. We're just going to invoke the server because it will know that the player is me. The first argument. Okay, for everybody that's screaming at me in the comments right now, please go down and edit and say sorry. <laughs> I just realized. Oh gosh, I'm an idiot. When you do on server invoke player, the first argument inside the, the function is inherently passed into the function itself. So over here, when I call invoke server, I don't have to pass in me. It knows that I'm the one that invoked the server. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully this works. All right, one, two, three. Click on save. Uh, save was pressed, we're now saving. Let's click on uh, load. Uh-oh. Attempted call a nail bell, stop. Okay, so we don't actually have to do this. Um, we just have to do placement, canvas, comma, my data because it knows it knows who I am now that's okay try again load dang it find first child module find first child name wait what oh hey we passed in the serialization so we're good furniture find first child name what is the name Name is table. It's inside the okay, so furniture is defined. Hmm. Find the furniture model with the same name. This is inside the module. Hang tight. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so over here on the uh, placement system, we had this function right here. Placement dot from serialization. It was over here. Um, take it back out of the placement model or module script. Put it back over here in this, uh, in, in my placement. It's inside the local script because furniture is only place referenced inside here in any of these three scripts on this one. So this is where he was talking about. Placement itself is actually invoked up here, so it's now a module. Placement object, right? We want to give it a new function called from serialization. And then from there we actually call placement dot from serialization canvas my data. My data gets returned by the invoke server, blah blah blah. Long story short, F5 if we come in here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, can we do rotate? One, two, three, four, five, six. Rotate again. We'll just we'll just place them all over. Gonna hit save. Saving. Done. All right. Gonna hit stop. Gonna hit play. I'm going to hit load. That is how the placement system works. That's what we were looking for. That was a lot of episodes just to make a saving system. <laughs> but it was done with, uh, with what did we use? Module scripts. And it was done with server calls and invokes and a lot of stuff that is not covered inside my book. Okay, I know a lot of you come to these scripting things to watch me um, program. But when it comes to like the module scripts and working with server sides and client sides and all that stuff, 
I am very much a office style programmer. I'm a business programmer with data and SQL calls, cold fusion, server side JavaScript, APIs, um, jQueries, stuff like that. That's the stuff that I do. So this stuff kind of confuses me whenever I gets into the 3D world and we're working with uh, data saves and data tables and stuff like that. So I do apologize for the very long video today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, happy Thursday. Sorry you guys are locked down and um, hopefully we'll get out of quarantine soon. Um, until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the video if you want. It's up to you. Love you guys very much. Have a great night and we will talk to you very soon. Outro.